I'm so excited for this video because this channel has just crossed a major milestone of 100,000 subscribers and that wouldn't be possible without you because you are one of them and so I wanted to celebrate that by celebrating you. So what I have done for this video is put together the top 35 uh, tips, tricks, habits uh, that you have commented in the comments from my videos, real life examples from new sewers just like you on the real things that have helped uh, the tips and tricks along the way. So this video is for you, by you, my sewing friends. Welcome back my lovely sewing friends. It is such a pleasure to actually bring you this video today. If we are just meeting for the first time, uh, my name is Evelyn Wood and welcome. Here we do uh, everything vintage sewing tips for our modern day sewing so we can get really better and get better resulting garments in our sewing. So do hit the subscribe button if that is something that you are also looking to do. Now, wow, right? Oh. Thank you so much. I cannot believe we have just crossed the 100,000 subscriber mark. Honestly, it happened actually very, very fast. The growth in the last little bit has been extraordinary. And I really, I can't all thank you enough for every kind word, every share, every everything that you do for this channel has just made it possible. And that's why I'm here is to help you get better at your sewing. And I love you because you help me get better at mine as well. And that's what this video is about, is celebrating you and all of your excellent, awesome tips, tricks, habits, from the comments, I have pulled these resources from the comments of some of my uh, top videos of the best habits from you, by, for you, by you. <laughs> okay, so let's get straight into these. Now get your pen and paper because these are real life tips and tricks and habits that are really useful that uh, for anyone beginning and even more advanced, there's always things too that we can always um, add to our sewing routines to get better. Okay, so let's get going. We have Mirage Sir, and I do apologize for any mispronunciation on names ahead of time, uh, says no pins in your mouth, sudden fright, cough, anything like that might, s and you might swallow one, really dangerous. Yes, right? So I have actually uh, made my own uh, wrist pin cushion for this reason. So I have a tutorial here on YouTube. I'll link that down below uh, where you can make your own one of these. And it, I'm still guilty of putting them in my mouth at times, I must admit. But generally when I have the wrist pin cushion, there is no need to. So do go make one of those. RR says, I never sew when I'm tired. Oh boy, yeah, that is, um, that's a very good habit. I know when I get uh, to a certain point, you just get too tired and you should definitely switch off. We all know that's when all the mistakes happen, for sure. That is a good habit. Raquel, uh, I always wash my fabrics when I come home from the fabric store. You never know how much it will shrink. Greetings from Spain. Yes, absolutely. So this is uh, pre-washing your fabric. Uh, I definitely, I have actually made a video here about uh, what is pre-washing, why you would want to pre-wash. So if that's a new term to you, uh, definitely uh, go watch that video there. There's links down in the description box below to, to look at after. Uh, next tip comes from G, G, I'm not sure how to pronounce that one. Uh, Daniels, uh, when I am going to start on a project, I read my instructions thoroughly. When I cut out the pattern pieces that I'm going to use, if I'm not going to work on that project right away, I will put the pattern pieces as well as the thread, any notions, any small bit of the fabric that I wanna use for that project in a gallon storage bag. This is really helpful when I have several projects going on at the same time and I might not be able to get back to it straight away. Yeah, so the tip here is, you know, cut out your pattern pieces, uh, read, read through everything first thoroughly and put all of your pieces for that project all together and bundle it, keep it in one place. That is a, such a good tip, uh, definitely, because it's so easy. I know, you know, I had to misplace things. I do that all the time and then you just waste your time going looking for them. Princess No Nap says, if you're using an expensive fabric and a new pattern, make the pattern using cheap material first. So if you need to alter anything, you don't accidentally damage the more expensive material. Oh, this is a big one, definitely. 
So I have also made a video about testing, uh, what, what sort of testing to do. This one is, this is making up your toile, your mock-up, your muslin, uh, the same thing, same term, Dif same, di three different words, the same thing. Definitely, uh, making up the mock-up first so that you don't damage your expensive fabric is such a good habit to get into. Such a good habit. Tonya has left a comment and says, I have all my machines and a lamp on a power strip before walking away from my table. I turn it off because of the light. Uh, so I don't have to wonder if I've left that ha left the iron on or the machine on. Yeah, so I, uh, this is, this is the same sort of tip that I, the trick that I use and I learned in when I worked in bridal is that you basically have your, uh, iron on my irons over here, <laughs> your iron on the same power point as your, um, like a light. So basically we used to have the music actually, um, at, at the store so that basically, you know, because you'll either see the light on or hear the music going if you've left your iron on. So it's just kind of like a visual or a sound cue. So, you know, and you don't accidentally leave the iron on. Um, it's a really, that's a really, really good habit to have because I know I'm always terrified of accidentally leaving the iron on. And of course it's inevitably happened to all of us at some point. So that's a great tip, Tonya. Deb E left uh, a tip for us. One of my habits is to never ever use my fabric scissors to cut anything but fabric or threads. My kids uh, knew never to touch my fabric scissors and I always make sure they had ample supply of paper scissors so they were never tempted. Yeah, everybody knows your fabric scissors are for fabric, your paper is for paper. They do not mix and you never borrow your fabric scissors to anyone, pretty much. Uh, Matt says, for me, the, the biggest tip uh, was realizing it's better to take all the time in the world cutting out the pattern exact is everything. Yeah, Matt, that is such a really, really great tip there. Uh, it, it's something that you don't know really when you start that you have to be really precise and it is worth taking the extra time to cut out. Definitely agree with that one. Arpine left a comment and says, I like keeping a sewing diary where I write down lessons learned as tips and advice for sewing similar garments next time. Oh, such a good tip, right? Writing everything down. I know I like to, if I copy things down and write them down, I learn them more. So keeping that sewing diary, I think um, is a really, really great, great tip um, from Arpine. Uh, Lisa says, my grandmother taught me how to sew when I was 10. She told me to unplug the sewing machine every time I change the needle, never leave it plugged in and unattended. Yeah, that's a great tip. A lot of people said uh, similar things. Make sure you turn off your machine every time you're going to um, t change the needle, change the foot uh, and leaving it unplugged. A lot of people mentioned kids and pets running around and accidentally pressing the presser foot. So, oh, that is, that is a really good tip to, and habit to get into is unplugging and turning off the machine when you're doing anything. Okay. Lisa gives us a tip. Uh, sorry, that was Lisa. Fran says, uh, I stick the package of needles I'm using onto the machine with blue tack. Wow. <laughs> That is a really, really great idea. So um, what Fran is doing is um, the, cause, because we should change the needle size and uh, the needle, like according to what fabric we're using, we need to change it a lot. So she sticks the one that she's using onto the machine with blue tack. So then you know which one it is at all times. That is brilliant, Fran. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you for sharing it. Um, everybody, thank you for sharing these. Okay, Sarah Jane uh, commented, my granny taught me to sew when I was a teen. Her big tip was to take a moment to sew a test scrap at the beginning of a project, especially if using an expensive or unusual material. So absolutely, this goes back to testing. So test that scrap first. I cannot recommend doing that enough testing because you don't want that messy stuff on your real garment, of course. Ingrid's tip for us is one thing I found helpful is to pick up pins and needles immediately when they're dropped. It only takes one time stepping on a sharp, sharp object uh, hiding in the carpet to realize the importance of doing this. Yeah, I mean, we've all stepped on pins before, right? <laughs> that is, I think, like one of the dangers of going into anybody's sewing room. It's enter at your own risk, particularly if you don't have shoes on. So definitely get in the habit of picking up the pins straight away. That's a really, really good, good tip. Thank you. 
Storm Chasing Ninja says for us, if you have a rotary cutter, always close it very flat, even if it's just for a few seconds. Rotary cutters are extremely sharp and dangerous and uh, if you cut yourself with them. Oh, totally agree. Absolutely. I don't use a rotary cutter myself, but I can see that sharp blade sitting around it and it would take ooh, one, one small slip and oh, let's not think about the end of result of that one. <laughs> okay. Rara uh, says, uh, if you sew with patterns, always read the instructions in full before you even start the project. There's almost always something you'll get wrong or wish you had done differently otherwise, or is that just me? Absolutely not just you. I totally 100% agree in something that I uh, definitely, um, you know, encourage everybody to do is read through the instructions. You need that 10,000 foot view, so to say, of the entire project first and then go step by step by step. It's a great, great habit to get into. Our next tip is from Michelina and it is when you start sewing one row of stitching, hold both threads behind the foot and lower your needle to make the first stitch and then lock and press your pedal. This helps with making your first stitches nice and clean and always lock the start and the finish. Absolutely. So uh, what Michelina is saying here is to, before you start uh, sewing, is to hold those tails, those thread ends, and just hand wheel down first because, you know, the take-up lever moves and it pulls those threads through. So holding them actually helps stop thread tangle and it makes, um, it, does, it stops nesting and it's really, really absolutely key in uh, not, not getting those thread nests all the time. So definitely recommend that one. Thank you for the tip. David's tip for us is I always trace my patterns so that I leave the original pattern pieces intact. My habit is to always put the pattern number on each traced piece uh, so you know which pattern it belongs to and then store the drafted pattern in a Ziploc bag, uh, which I store in the original pattern. Great, great tips. So many. Uh, yeah, I, I trace my patterns to make copies of them. Many different reasons why, but um, those of you that do will uh, know that's a really great habit. Then you have your originals there still and can always go back to different sizes and, and particularly if they're vintage patterns, you definitely don't want to be chopping up those ones. Bobby's tip. Uh, I have Bobby's habit, I should say, is a good habit I taught if changing the needle foot bobbin thread turn off the machine. One student didn't, ended up with the needle broken off in her finger because she automatically jerked. Oh, her mum had to take her to the ER. Oh, isn't that terrifying? <sighs> I know, I'm getting like heart palpitations thinking about it. Yeah, definitely whenever you change the needle, turn off the machine. That is one of the habits um, that I mentioned in this video here on the top five good habits to have. Absolutely cannot recommend that one enough. Should just be automatic. Like you definitely make that automatic habit. Uh, Zoha says every evening after I'm done sewing, I clean and oil my machine and I also clean the room as we all know how messy sewing projects are. Uh, yes, we do. <laughs> I really love this tip. Um, I like to make sure that I have a nice clean sewing space uh, because it, it helps me have a clean decluttered mind if my space is deemed clear cluttered. So it's a great habit. Uh, Sasset uh, I, says, I use disposable eyelash wands to clean my machines. They are incredibly handy and great to grab the onto the fluff much better. That's a fantastic idea because I bet you even find those lots from um, in the, the thrift store as well. Reuse those eyelash. I'm going to try that one. I think. Great tip. Thank you for leaving it. A Delta Flute 03 says, I remember to cover my machines when not in use. Helps to avoid dust, pet hair, children's sticky fingers uh, from getting on your machine. Absolutely. Uh, so I always keep mine uh, covered back here. I take them off because it looks prettier when I'm filming. Absolutely such a good habit is to make sure you cover the machines because you don't want all of the little dust that just gets into your tension discs because they are on top. So it's just going to cause lots of problems. So cannot recommend doing that enough. Our next tip from Candice, I use rocks that I brought from the dollar store as weights when cutting out patterns. Yeah, that's a great, great idea. So um, just little rocks, crystals, anything like that. A lot of people use those big uh, industrial washers to use as pattern weights to just weigh down your pattern um, instead of um, pinning all the time as a different alternative there really real, really really. I'm not sure how to say that one properly. Uh, cleaning the sewing machine uh, was the best habit you mentioned in my opinion. I've had my machine for a while now and never thought to do that, but I will this weekend. Yeah, so um, that's when I mentioned actually 
getting into the habit of uh, cleaning and defluffing your machine. So you need to take off the uh, the metal throat plate, the thread guide on top, and pull out your bobbin area and defluff that area. Absolutely needs to be a habit at regular intervals always. Your machine will love you for it. Alley Cat 321. My best tip, uh, have, my best habit is to change the needle after every project. It makes a huge difference. Yeah, that's um, after I, there's different, um, everyone has a different way of judging when they need to change the needle, but finding the one that works for you because you need a sharp needle. That's, that's the key. Your needle needs to be sharp. So uh, Alley Cats is after every project and that's a great one. I do have a video here on how often you should change the needle and that's sort of my guide on what I use to um, know when it's time to change the needle. Susan Villanova? 2257. I apologize for mispronouncing that one. Uh, tie up that hair. Seriously, if it's longer than shoulder length, get it out of the way, preferably in a bun. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I feel pain coming from this one. I agree. That's a very good habit. Uh, don't like, I don't like to wear dangly scarves and I usually, I wouldn't sew with this on because again, it just leans down. And I think I, I actually once accidentally cut um, a necklace when I was cutting and it was dangling down. So that's how I learned the hard way not to wear dangly things. Good, good habit. Curried unicorn. I love these. My iron habit is to switch the heat down to nothing and the steam to off, then empty out all the water before storing. Uh, that way I don't run the risk of switching it on and forgetting it's on. Ooh, a friend had a kitchen fire that way. <gasps> I also prolong the life of the iron and it also saves me from uh, dumping a super hot iron onto fabrics that can't cope and end up melted mess. Yes. So uh, def, that's a really great um, habit I think is if you finish with your iron, turn it down to nothing because everybody, I'm pretty sure I can safely say everybody has accidentally just turned the iron on, grabbed it, put it down and then realized it was way too hot because we forgot to actually check the temperature. Oh, such a good tip. Thank you for that one. Carrie Lan, Carrie Lan. A habits I learned back in the 1960s when learning to sew, be organized. Uh, bring everything needed for the project, i.e. tools, notions, extra bobbins, prepare all fabric units needed to be completed for said project. Now you are ready and don't need to find something important. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, I couldn't agree with you more, is to be organized. Half the reason what stalls us sewers a lot of the time is that we're looking for things that, you know, we probably should have already had. So that's a really, really great tip is to be organized, get all of, all of everything together first. Such a great tip. Thank you. Sue says, I always fill at least four bobbins before I start the project. I keep them on the unused thread spool. Uh, so I have, um, all I have to do is grab the bobbin and it's um, and keep sewing. That's a great tip. A four seems a lot. Uh, I would definitely um, at least fill one right up at the beginning of the project, if not even two. I think it's a great tip. Have all your bobbins pre-filled because we all know how frustrating it is and the bobbin runs out and it's always this far before the end. What is with that, right? The bobbin always runs out. Yeah, anyway, that's like sewing problem number one. Our next tip from Andrea says, snip threads as you go. Oh, definitely, definitely snip all those threads as you go. Just makes so much less mess for you. Great tip. Caroline says, I never use big scissors to cut the threads. I used a big one and put a tiny hole in the fabric I was working on. Yeah, absolutely agree with you. I have done this also trying to like snip tiny little areas with huge scissors. Ah, oh, such a bad idea. Seems like a great idea at the time. It never turns out well. Use small scissors for small jobs, big scissors for big jobs. Good, good tip. Uh, next one from Seven and the Littlest um, Mew. The thing I remember everyone saying when reminding me about cleaning, take off the faceplate. Do you see those uh, felt pads between the feed dogs? Well, you shouldn't because there are no such thing as felt pads on the feed dogs. <laughs> Clean that machine uh, between every major project and uh, you'll find that your tension issues are sorted. Yeah, so cleaning is a big one. I had to include this one because <laughs> it made me laugh so much. <laughs> Everyone's done this, right? It's been forever since you cleaned your machine. You undo it, pull off the faceplate and there's the little felt pads that 
there shouldn't be any there. So <laughs> clean your machine. Thank you for that tip. Uh, Mishka Cat says a good habit, take breaks during your sewing. Oh, you need to eat, drink, change position, talk to someone, kiss your husband or hug a cat. There are many things we're supposed to do. Sewing is not a whole world. We just make clothes, our families, friends, and our health. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, I definitely relate to this one. I can't tell you the amount of times that I've, uh, you know, not gone to the bathroom because I'm like, Nelly finished, Nelly finished. And then I stop and I'm so dehydrated, so hungry, so cranky. <laughs> Yeah, definitely take those breaks. That is such a good tip. Thank you for leaving that one. Reminding us all. Thank you for reminding us all. Uh, little old me, I have been sewing for 53 years. I follow all those rules all my sewing uh, all my sewing years. One important habit I learned at sewing school years ago was sit up straight at your machine. A hunched back is not a good one. Good posture is so important. This is a really great tip. How often do we like sit like this sewing and then it's so not good for you. Trying to consciously remember to sit up straight and keep your head such a good tip. Thank you for reminding us of that one again. I need to, I need constant reminder of that. Polly Dolly uh, says, I iron all my pattern pieces so I don't have the original fold lines, but I do fold them individually and place them between the folded instructions booklets and slip them into the envelope. Yeah, so ironing out, uh, did you know ironing your patterns is a thing? Yeah, <laughs> you can do it. So you can iron them absolutely no water, no steam whatsoever. And a very, the lowest temperature that your iron goes, you can actually iron the pattern, the tissue pattern pieces so they're flat. It's a really, really great habit to get into because you, you just can't um, get nice cut lines and exact cutting if your pattern pieces are all crumpled. So it's a really good habit to just take the time and do things properly. Crystal says, my grandma always, always read and take notes on your pattern instructions and fold and put your pattern in freezer bags so not to contain the crazy refolding job. Yeah, absolutely. So taking notes and writing things, I love finding those notes on patterns when I find vintage patterns or secondhand patterns, so important. Write your own instructions, your own interpretation, something that makes sense for you because when you come back next time to do it, it's going to make so much more sense for you. And then refolding everything in, yeah, definitely great tips. Such great tips. I, I there, there are so many more. I could only do this many. Uh, honestly, you all have the best, best advice and information. And I love so much that you always share all these comments and tips in the comments. And it really does this is my point being here is that we're a community. Sewing is for everybody and we all learn from each other. So thank you to everyone for always leaving these wonderful tips and tricks and your experience for us all because that is how we all learn more. Sharing is caring after all. So I cannot actually thank you all enough for being here. It actually means the, the world to me that you're here. Thank you for every single comment, every like, every share, every time you recommend my videos, my channels to somebody else. It really does mean the world to me. Uh, I cannot thank you enough. Uh, those of you, some of you have been here recently and some of you have been here for a long time and it makes me so much happy to see you all having such great sewing success and it brings me so much joy that I can at least share my experience and that it helps you reach those sewing dreams that you have for yourself because I really want to see more people sewing in the world and that's why it brings me so much joy to see your success in your sewing. And on that note, leave all of your best tips and tricks for us in maybe the comments below because if you liked this video, I think I will make some more compilation videos. I was even thinking of maybe some um, uh, funny ones along the way, maybe like the worst sewing inju injury that you've had or something like that. Thank you. Thank you and uh, happy sewing and may we continue for much, much longer. Bye.